I updated my iPhone a couple of days ago and strangely the black magic camera app now only allows me to shoot up to 30 frames per second prior to that it would allow me to shoot up to 60 frames per second and well, today I'm filming using the front facing camera so let's go the weather is beautiful today it's only zero degrees down here in Edmonton and we're going on a vlog today and we're going to be talking about getting started with a black magic camera app now if you're into vlogging and you only have a smartphone and you want to get started with filming then you could just use the black magic camera app because the native camera app that tim cook provides us in his very expensive iphone hmm, i think is crap let's go so today i'm going to be telling you guys about the black magic camera app and the things that you need to do when you're starting out using the black magic camera app for vlogging temperature right about now is zero <laughs> as you can see most of the ice has melted away most of the snow has melted away but when you look down there at the field there's still a lot more snow as it snowed a couple of days ago i have a list of notes here that i'm going to be referencing for this video so the very first thing you need to do is to of course visit the app store and download the black magic camera app onto your device now this app is only for ios users and by that i mean of course the people that own an iphone you are the only people that can use the black magic camera app at the moment i don't know what black magic is thinking about the android users maybe in later days they will finally come up with another version for the android users so once you've downloaded the app you want to sign up so when you sign up for the black magic camera cloud you are allowed up to two gigs of storage and that comes in handy especially when you're working in teams and you want to send in these proxy files to an editor so they can start working on the video right away for example if you have another person that is working with you on the same project you can send them the proxy files right there and then and they'll start editing the video while you're still shooting and that's kind of very cool so once you've downloaded the app you want to familiarize yourself with the ui or what they call the user interface in the user interface of course you're going to have your camera lenses iso you're going to have your white balance your shutter speed now those are the main key components that you need to familiarize yourself with and master your settings on top of that you can save these as presets for your next filming vlog so this is the lrt valley line just above my head here We're talking about the very first item which is the cameras we know that if you're using the iphone 11 12, the 13, the 14, and the 15, we have three cameras at our disposal. Four cameras, in fact. So familiarize yourself with how to switch your cameras. First of all, you want to make sure that you use the 26 mil because the 26 millimeter camera gives you the best quality ever. That's the LRT line running over. Right now, we're getting onto the bridge. That's very beautiful. And the river is a little bit frozen <laughs> but there are some sort of like footsteps in there maybe some little animals were walking on the frozen snow or frozen ice so you want to use the 26 millimeter for filming every other time but of course sometimes that comes with a limitation of wideness what i mean by wideness is if you wanted to shoot a very wide video or you wanted a wider field of view then you really can't get that when you're using the 26 mil therefore you could switch to the 13 mil which is like a 0.5 x therefore you get a wider field of view as compared to the 26 and the 52 mil so your best bet would be filming using the 26 millimeter now one thing about the blackmagic camera app is it allows you to film video and switching around all the lenses for example right now i'm filming using the front facing camera if i wanted to switch this up i could switch to the back facing camera but of course that has a problem because when i switch the back facing camera i'm going to have a problem of upside down footage my footage is going to look upside down and that is a problem that you can actually fix in post-production but it's a pain in the butt <laughs> The next one is setting your frame rates so when you shoot at whatever frame rate you want to shoot at of course black magic camera app has already preset frame rates within the app you can only shoot at 23.976 frames per second and then you can shoot at 24 25 50 frames per second 30 frames per second and then you can shoot at also 
60 frames per second. So when you shoot at whatever frame rate that you've chosen, just make sure that you set your shutter speed right. And what I mean by that is your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. For example, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, just make sure that your shutter speed is at 1 over 48th of a second. In that way, you're able to achieve that natural motion blur that we see in <laughs> those blockbuster Hollywood movies. And that's kind of a very cool thing, that is if you're looking for the natural motion blur, because that's what our eyes see. But in certain situations, that rule can be broken. For example, right now, I'm filming at 30 frames per second but my shutter speed is at one over eight thousand of a second <laughs> that's even hard to pronounce you guys look at that i'm standing over the bridge and there are vehicles right behind me that's kind of cool so another example if you're shooting at 60 frames per second then your shutter speed should be at one over one twentieth of a second so your next setting is your ISO setting. Now here's the thing, the ISO setting and your shutter speed control the amount of light that is hitting your camera sensor. If you have so much light, you need to bring your ISO all the way down to the least value on your device. Now this applies to even shooting with a professional digital camera. The same rule applies, the same, the same rule applies <laughs> English is not coming out. What I was saying is you make sure that you shoot at the lowest ISO that your device can offer you. In my case right now with a Blackmagic camera app on my iPhone 12 Pro, the lowest ISO I can shoot at is 33. And that value can actually change depending on what lens you're using. Now, if you're shooting in a room that is somewhat well lit, you could as well shoot at at least ISO 100. Anything above that is going to introduce a lot of grain in your footage. And because it's video that is coming off a small sensor like the iPhone sensor, you're likely not going to be able to salvage that footage when you come back and begin editing in post. So just make sure your ISO is at the bare minimum. In that way, you won't have a lot of noise in your video. Well, this is the Motat conservatory right here i've never been to this place but at least i know like i said it's a conservatory they have all sorts of plants in there all sorts of trees different species in there so maybe that's a place i need to visit for my next vlog who knows <laughs> give me a thumbs up maybe i'll come and do a vlog in there and give you guys a detailed tour of the Matat Conservatory down here in Edmonton. So the other thing is the white balance. Now, white balance is very, very crucial, especially if you intend to color grade your footage. But if you don't, then you can choose to go with auto white balance. But thankfully, with a Blackmagic camera app, you're able to set your white balance the way you want it. Looks like we've hit the end of the road. Now let's begin walking back. Now, with a Blackmagic camera app, you're able to set your white balance the way you want it. But getting this right from the word go, especially in camera, is your best bet. Because you don't want to be struggling with fixing the white balance of a bunch of different clips in post-production and trying to make sure that the white balance matches up with every other clip within your timeline. That can be a waste of time. So what you need to do is to set your white balance right in camera before you even shoot your video. So the Blackmagic camera app offers five different settings for the white balance. It has the cloudy, shared, fluorescent, night, and day white balance settings. My favorite is shooting with the day settings. So on your Kelvin scale, the day setting on the white balance is between 5,000 and 5,600. That is like what mimics the daylight in other words, the light of the sun. So setting your white balance between that range will give you the best lighting and your colors will also look great when you set your white balance to 5600 Kelvin. It all depends on your current lighting condition. For example, if I'm, if I'm filming in the night, then I don't think I would use 5600 Kelvin for my video. Either I, would, I use the auto setting and then lock my white balance once the camera has you know, dialed in the white balance setting for me, then I can lock it. Or I could choose the night setting and then lock it. So those are the things that you need to do when starting out with a Blackmagic camera app. 
thank you guys for watching the vlog i love you and i'll see you in the next video just before you go just make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also give this video a like you know that's what keeps us going and make sure you leave a comment in the comment section i'll be glad and happy to reply to all your comments and if you have questions about using the black magic camera app just make sure to hit me up in the comment section now <laughs> i'm conquering my fears of filming in public as you see people are walking past by me and everyone is just minding their business our greatest fear when filming in public is we don't like the look you know everyone gives you this look when you're filming in public <laughs> But you know what? At the end of the day, you're going about your business. They are going about their business too. And you continue with your video. So there's no need to fear filming in public. That is the only way of conquering your fears of filming in public. Are you guys looking at how the skies look like? It's a very cloudy day and I love it. So guys, goodbye. I'll see you in the next one.